This is the Come A Girl Daily Podcast, written by Stephanie Bond. September 14th, Wednesday. Phew, now everyone has clean sheets, Gina said. Thanks for helping me, Gabriel. You're welcome, baby. I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight. Gina gave a little laugh. Same here, but it's Gina at work, okay? Sorry. You just look so beautiful today, I forgot myself. But I'll save it for tonight. Okay, she said, her voice fading as she walked toward the door. But you know my 90-day rule. See you at seven. Uh Uh-huh. When the door closed, he grunted like a man denied a treasure. Then he walked around the ward, gathering up discarded bedclothes, whistling under his breath. What's this? He murmured. Paper crackled. Dear Jonas, I never liked that pear tree, huh? Ah, the note Faraday had written for Karen Sue yesterday and pinned to her gown. It must have fallen off when they shuffled us around to change the sheets. I was hoping Jonas would be back to visit before it was lost. The sound of paper being crumpled into a ball tears at me. I wonder if Karen can hear it too. The door opened. Oh, hi, Gabriel. Hi, Donna, he said, his voice rich with innuendo. Just the person I was hoping to see. What an indiscriminate flirt. Are we still on for tonight? She asked. Yeah, but it'll be nine before I can get to your place. So, an early date with Gina, then a late date with Donna? I'll make it worth the wait, she promised. He gave a deep laugh. How about a little preview now? Kissing noises sounded. Stop, Gabriel. We can't. Why not? No one will be looking for me for another 30 minutes. What if someone comes in? Into the vegetable patch? No one comes in here. These patients don't have to be fed. They never push a help button. And visitors are few and far between. It's a pretty depressing place. More kissing noises. Still, it doesn't feel right. Oh, baby, it feels right to me. Come on. You got me so hot and bothered, it's uh, not going to take long. Okay, she relented. But hurry. Oh, my God. They're not really going to have sex right in front of me. Thirty seconds later, moans and groans sounded. Then a distinctive rhythmic thump. They really are having sex right in front of me. I'm caught between fascination and horror, admiration and disgust. Having sex in a coma ward is akin to having sex in a cemetery. But worse, because we're not dead yet. Although, I have to admit, it's the best entertainment I've had all day. And it's the closest thing to getting laid we veggies have experienced in months. In some cases, years. True to his word, Gabriel did not take long. I was hoping Gina would walk in at the event's climax, but alas, it didn't happen. The couple disengaged with a sucking noise of unknown origin, then quickly said goodbye until later. Donna left first. And Gabriel, the cad, took his time gathering linen and reorganizing the cart. The door opened, and I was afraid Donna had come back for another round. Oh, you're still here, Gina said. Guess I was daydreaming about you, Gabriel gushed. She laughed. You're making me impatient to see you tonight. Let me help you with that cart. After they left the room, I lay there marveling at how lopsided relationships can be and how the person who cares the least 
always has the upper hand. Hi, this is Stephanie Bond, author of the Coma Girl Daily Podcast. Do you have a favorite character in the Coma Girl story? Share your opinion with other Coma Girl fans in the Facebook group. The link is in the show notes. Thanks for listening.